A relatively small pterosaur, Dimorphodon was only about 1 meter long but had a skull that was about 25 centimeters long. Its body was surprisingly light, and its weight-saving adaptations for flight included hollow limb bones and a skull reduced to little more than a scaffolding around its large eye and face. Dimorphodon lived along the coasts of ancient seas and probably used its puffin-like skull and fang-like teeth to capture fish and rip them apart. This pterosaur would probably have caught fish at the surface by lunging for them while skimming low over the water. It is not thought to have entered the water or dived. During the late Jurassic, the pterosaur Rompharynchus was the most common flying vertebrate in the British Isles and Spain. It had a wingspan of less than 2 meters, and shared the skies with the first bird, Archaeopteryx. Although it was small by pterosaur standards, it was still several times the size of the birds that it flew alongside. Like most pterosaurs, it lived in coastal environments and almost certainly ate a diet that was rich in fish. Its elongate skull had a series of nail-like teeth as well as a sharp beak, both of which were adaptations for catching prey. As Rompharynchus skimmed over the waves, it immersed its head into water to scoop up fish in its beak. As the beak closed the teeth interlocked to secure the fish, it was a powerful flyer. Its long, thin wings provided thrust, and its slim, stiffened tail was used as a rudder for steering. Scans of its fossilized brain cavity indicate that Rompharynchus had sharp senses. Pterodactylus, meaning wing finger, is one of the best known pterosaurs. Many complete skeletons have been found, from small juveniles to large adults. Pterodactylus was one of the first pterodactyloid pterosaurs. With shorter tails and longer necks, pterodactyloids were better adapted to flight than their earlier relatives. Unlike most other pterodactyloids, pterodactylus was relatively small, with a wingspan of 1 meter. However, there were a number of different pterodactylus species, and it can be difficult to distinguish the young of a large species from the adults of a small species. It lived in coastal areas of an inland sea that covered southern Germany in the late Jurassic it hunted small fish using its long jaws which were full of small teeth. One of the few theropods from the early Jurassic Dilophosaurus was also one of the most striking it was slender and lightly built but is best known for its remarkable skull this had two parallel plate-like crests arranged along the upper surface of the snout no one knows why it had these crests but the most popular idea is that they were used for sexual displays inside its mouth there was a prominent notch between the tip of the upper jaw and the rest of the teeth and this may have helped Dilophosaurus to grab small prey it was originally described as a new species of Megalosaurus and not a signed its own genus until 1970. Many large theropods had crests, bumpridges or horns on their heads but one of the biggest and certainly oldest theropod skulls belonged to Monolophosaurus. This predatory dinosaur had a very thick and knobby crest on its head rather than being attached to the top of the skull as in many theropods the crest was integrated into the whole head. It is hard to say how the crest functioned it is very thick and strong at the top but thin and hollow lower down suggesting that as a whole it was weak and could not resist heavy forces only one specimen of Monolophosaurus is known in some large parts of this are missing, including the entire tail. So we do not know a great deal about this animal however it was certainly a top predator and would have been a capable killer. Discovered in the Transantarctic Mountains during the 1990s Cryolophosaurus was clearly a top predator fragments of Ankylosaurs ornithopods and theropods had previously been found in Antarctica but Cryolophosaurus is currently the only impressive dinosaur specimen known from the continent it had a very unusual bony crest above its eyes this was a thin sheet like structure that curved upward and forward over the top of the skull and had parallel lines decorating the front and back perhaps a close relative of Dilophosaurus. Cryolophosaurus had a shallow skull and long slender proportions. Megalosaurus was described in 1824 after several large reptile bones were discovered in Oxfordshire, England. Greater than this makes it the very first dinosaur to be recognized by science because the fragmentary remains were superficially similar to the bone of large, living lizards, Megalosaurus was originally imagined to be a gigantic, four-footed reptile, similar to modern monitor lizards, today know that it was a two-legged predator with short arms, 
Despite the length of time since it was first discovered, it remains enigmatic due to the poor fossil record. Known from just a single immature specimen, Eustreptospondylus is one of Europe's best preserved large theropods. It had a low, crestless skull, and a shallow notch in the upper jaw, close to the front of the snout, gave it curved margins to the edges of its mouth. The lower jaw was long and slender, and had a thickened and deepened tip. These features are like those developed to an extreme in the Cretaceous spinosaurids, which had skull like those of modern crocodiles. Indeed, some experts have suggested that Eustreptospondylus may have foraged on shorelines for carcasses in marine life. Ceratosaurus was a formidable and frightening predator. Its name is a reference to its rounded nasal horn, but it also had tall triangular or rounded horns in front of its eyes. It had a large, deep skull that was well suited for a life of preying on large animals. Unique among theropods, Ceratosaurus had a continuous row of flat bony plates known as scutes running along its neck, back and tail, which was deep but narrow. Dubroilosaurus was named in 2002, after first being mistakenly considered a new species of Pochilopleuron, a large theropod. Later studies showed that it was more related t. O. Eustreptospondylus. Dubroilosaurus had a shorter snout but the only other features that set them apart were subtle differences in their vertebrae and shoulder blades. It seemed to lack any sort of crest or horns, but the only known specimen is a juvenile, and it is possible that these structures developed later in life. It probably had short, powerful arms with three-fingered hands. Its fossils were discovered in sedimentary rocks that were laid down in coastal, mangrove swamps. This suggests that it might have hunted fish and other marine prey. One of the most abundant of all Jurassic theropods, Allosaurus is known from many specimens discovered in the Morrison Formation in western USA. A formidable predator, its large skull and jaws held sharp, serrated teeth and the three large claws on its hands may have been used to grip the sides of prey. Its powerful jaws and claws, combined with its considerable size, have led most scientists to imagine Allosaurus as a predator of stegosaurs, ornithopods and perhaps sauropods. Evidence for the fact that Allosaurus fed on these large plant-eating dinosaurs comes from tooth marks preserved on their bones, although like all predators it would also have scavenged on dead dinosaurs as well. Other specimen has a hole in one of its tail vertebrae exactly matching the size and shape of a stegosaur tail spike. On this occasion, it seems that the herbivore succeeded in causing a major injury to the predator. Synraptor means Chinese hunter, and so far all of its fossils have been excavated in that country. It was a large predator that closely resembled its more famous relative, Allosaurus. Several specimens are known from different parts of China, and more work is needed to establish exactly which specimens belong to which species. Some paleontologists think that several animals named as separate species of Synraptor are actually different enough to be placed in their own genus. One thing that is known for certain is that it occasionally fought with others of its kind. Scientists have found tooth marks on the skull and jaw of one fossil that appear to have been made by another Synraptor. Discovered in England, Proceratosaurus is known from only one well-preserved skull. At the tip of its snout the base of a crest is preserved, because the top of T. He skull is missing, the shape of this crest is unknown, but it is though to have been horn-like, similar to that of Ceratosaurus. Alternatively, it may have had a long crest that extended the whole length of its skull. A small, lightly billed predator, Ornitholestes ate small animals, such as insects, lizards, frogs and dinosaur hatchlings. Its front upper teeth were particularly long and, unusually, had flattened tips, the shape of the bones at the snout tip once led to the suggestion that it might have had a nasal horn, but new observations have shown that this was probably not the case. Its three-fingered hands were long and slender. It was almost certainly covered with filament-like feathers.
Guanlong is an early form of Tyrannosaur, and although it may not look much like the famous Tyrannosaurus, it has much in common with its fierce cousin. Among other things, it has relatively blunt teeth and the shape of the hips shows that there are evolutionary ties. It was a relatively small and lightly built predator that would have hunted other small dinosaurs. It was found in the fossil beds of western China, and we know a few other predators from that region. Despite its size, it may have been one of the top predators around. Analysis has shown that its crest may have played a part in the animal's biting and feeding mechanism, although it is thought that its primary function was one of display. This small dinosaur is known from only two fossils, one from France and a much smaller individual from southern Germany. The Germany discovery changed how people thought about dinosaurs by showing that they could be small. This dinosaur's close relatives have fuzzy proto-feathers, so Comsignathus probably had them also, although none have yet been found on the specimens. Despite its small size, this species was a predator. This is suggested by its mouthful of sharp teeth. Archaeopteryx was discovered in the Jurassic limestone of Zonhofen in Germany in 1859. Perhaps the most famous fossil in the world, the first specimen was disarticulated and incomplete. The skeleton specimens are now known, and some are amazingly well preserved. Like modern birds, Archaeopteryx had long wing and tail feathers, and this is why it has always been regarded as the first bird. However, we now know that complex feathers and other bird-like features were widespread among the meat-eating dinosaurs known as Manoraptorans, while Archaeopteryx remains recognized as one of the earliest ancestors of modern birds, many Manoraptorans were almost as bird-like. Anchisaurus is North America's best-known early sauropodomorph. Its skull was shallow, with a narrow snout, and the teeth at the front of its upper jaw pointed forwards. These features suggest that it was omnivorous, and one specimen contains a small reptile within its gut. Anchisaurus had broad hands, and its large thumb claws were strongly curved. Its feet are unusual compared to those of its relatives in that the claw on the first toe was smaller than those on the other toes. Lufengosaurus's snout was deep and broad, and it had distinctive bony bumps just behind its large nostrils and on its cheeks. A bony ridge on the side of its upper jaw might have helped anchor soft tissue. If to, then Lufengosaurus must have had larger cheeks than most other sauropodomorphs. Its closely spaced, serrated teeth suited a diet of leaves. It was often thought to be very similar to Platyosaurus from Europe. Massospondylus is known from several complete skeletons and skulls and even some eggs containing embryos. It was a medium-sized, broad-skulled sauropodomorph with large eye sockets. Its broad, five-fingered hands had particularly large, curved thumb claws. A V-shaped bone, similar to the wishbone of birds, was present at the front of its ribcage. It had been thought that Massospondylus was able to walk on all fours. However, recent work on the mechanics of its short forearm suggests that it moved around, all of the time, on its hind legs. Vulcanodon was an early sauropod known from a single, partial skeleton without a skull. However, like other early sauropods it probably had a deep, blunt-snouted skull with leaf-shaped teeth. Its feet were short, and large claws were present, at least on the inside toes. In contrast to later sauropods, the bones of its first toe were key. Tay long. Two of the claws on each foot were broad and nail-like, not deep and narrow as they were in other sauropods. It was originally thought to have been a close relative of the sauropods, but not actually a sauropod in the true sense. However, it has now been established that it was indeed a true sauropod. Baropasaurus was originally named for just a sacrum, but a large number of additional remains are now also thought to belong to it. Its skull is unknown, although isolated teeth have been found. These are broad at the tip, but have a narrower base, and there are coarse serrations either side of the crown. It had particularly slender limbs for a sauropod. Its neck vertebrae were long but its body vertebrae were quite compressed. The shape of its vertebrae is unique among sauropods, leading some experts to suggest that it was an unusual side branch in sauropod evolution. 
Shunosaurus is the most abundant dinosaur in a fossil assemblage that has been named after it. The Shunosaurus fauna, its neck was quite short compared with that of many other sauropods, but it does appear to have been quite flexible. Its skull was deep seen from the side, but narrow looked at from above. It had more teeth than any other sauropod, with 25 or 26 being present in each half of the lower jaw. At first, one could mistake the front half of Mementiosaurus with Brachiosaurus, as they both have domed foreheads and enormously long necks. Both dinosaurs certainly used their necks, both dinosaurs certainly used their necks to reach for food. However, the two are only distantly related and can be easily told apart. Mementiosaurus had a pointed skull and its shoulder were lower and less massive than those of Brachiosaurus, its neck 19 vertebrae, more than any other dinosaur, and these were twice as long as those in its back. There is a large number of Mementiosaurus spices, and each stands out or its long neck, even among other long-necked contemporaries. Unlike most sauropods, Brachiosaurus had very long front legs and a tall, erect neck. These features gave Brachiosaurus a huge reach. Without needing to stretch, a large individual could probably reach more than 15 meters up into trees to feed. Despite what some early illustrations show, this herbivore probably could not rear up on its hind legs. Most of its weight was carried on its huge front limbs, so it would have been hard to take its full weight on its hind legs and stay balanced. In any case, it was so tall it probably had little need to rear up. It could have reached higher to feed than almost any other. Dinosaur Brachiosaurus had a large skull, even compared to similarly immense sauropods. It had a distinctive bar of bone in the middle of its forehead that created a large bulge on the top of its head. Inside the skull, this bar separates the two openings of the nostrils. It was once thought that the nostrils were large holes located high up on the skull, but recent research suggests that they were in fact relatively small and located closer to the front of the head. One of the best known of all dinosaurs, Diplodocus was like other Diplodocids in having 15 neck vertebrae, proportionally short forelimbs, and a whip-like tip to its tail. Its skull is rectangular and ends with a broad, squared-off mouth. It had triangular spines along its back, and this was possibly the as in all sauropods. Studies of toothware suggest that Diplodocus used a feeding strategy known as unilateral branch stripping. A branch was gripped between its peg-like teeth, its head was pulled sharply upward or downward, and as a result either the upper or lower tooth row stripped the foliage off the branch. Three species of Diplodocus are currently recognized, and another Diplodocid, originally named Seismosaurus, is now regarded as a fourth, and the largest, Diplodocus species. Barosaurus was similar to Diplodocus in many ways, among other features, it shared distinctive hollows in its tail vertebrae and almost identical limbs. They differed primarily in the length of their neck vertebrae. It probably had 16, which is one more than other Diplodocids, and they were about a third longer than those of Diplodocus. This suggests that Barosaurus probably had a larger feeding range than its shorter relative. Like other diplodocoids, Apatosaurus' tail had large muscles at the base, while the tail tip was slender and whip-like. Many old restorations of Apatosaurus give it a box-shaped skull, but a true Apatosaurus skull, as described in 1978, shows that its head was long and rectangular, much like that of Diplodocus, but broader. In general, all Apatosaurines had thicker legs and more heavily constructed than other diplodocids. Decreosaurus is a member of a group of diplodocoid sauropods called Th. 
e. decreosaurids these dinosaurs were small compared to other sauropods and had relatively short necks the neck contained 12 unusually short vertebrae so it could probably browse vegetation only from ground level to a height of around 3 meters. Camarasaurus is the most common North American sauropod its neck was broad but not as the necks of many sauropods this indicates that it probably fed on vegetation growing at various heights it had a broad skull with short strong jaws and stout spoon-shaped teeth that could have enabled it to feed on event the coarsest vegetation it is one of the most primitive members of the macronarians the sauropod group that also includes the brachiosaurs and titanosaurs like many macronarians Camarasaurus's skull had particularly large nostril openings its vertebrae also also contained large openings that housed air sacs connected to its lungs it is from these chambers that the dinosaur gets its name chambered lizard the vegetation faster than it can process it its belly is huge. Discovered in the 1850s Celadosaurus was one of the first dinosaurs to be found as a complete skeleton this original find is still one of the best preserved European dinosaurs it had stout limbs and walked on all fours rows of oval armor plates ran along its neck body and limbs and it had hooked spikes down the sides of its limbs because all the fossils have been found in marine rocks it has been suggested that this dinosaur may have been an island dweller or lived on the coast. Lesothosaurus is one of the earliest members of the Ornithischians it had long slender hind limbs and small forelimbs with hands that would not have been able to grasp properly like all Ornithischians the tips of Lesothosaurus's upper and lower jaws were horny forming a beak-like structure behind the beakleaf shaped teeth lined the jaws and near the front of the upper jaw were 12 fang-like teeth analysis of its teeth have shown that Lesothosaurus sliced up plant material with its beak and was not able to chew its food. Heterodontosaurus is a member of a small group of peculiar ornithischians called heterodontosaurids unlike virtually all other ornithischians these animals had long grasping hands with strongly curved claws. Act time equals 0.4 s, greater than heterodontosaurus, meaning different toothed lizard, had three different tooth shapes, small, incisor-like teeth were present at the front of the upper jaw, and blunter, chisel-shaped teeth were positioned farther back, most obvious were the large, fang-like teeth in both the upper and lower jaws. In addition, as in all ornithischians, it had a beak at the front of the upper and lower jaws. It was probably herbivorous, but its strong jaws, large fangs, and grasping hand suggest that it may also have eaten small animals. Its long, slender hind limbs also suggest that it was a fast runner. Scatellosaurus is one of the oldest and most primitive thyreophorans, the ornithischian group that later included the armored ankylosaurs and plated stegosaurs. It was lightly built, and probably capable of walking on its hind legs. Like other thyreophorans, Scatellosaurus had rows of armor plates along its body and tail. These formed parallel rows, with as many as five rows on each side. It also had a double row of scoots, or external plates, running neck to tail. Stegosaurus is the best-known stegosaur, and was the first member of that group to be named. Its bizarre, diamond-shaped plates have been the cause of much disagreement, but recent work has shown that they were arranged in two staggered rows that ran along the neck, back, and tail. In most other stegosaurs the plates were paired, so Stegosaurus was unusual in that respect. It has often been suggested that the plates were used in defense or in controlling body temperature. However, their position on the body makes a defensive role unlikely, while a role in temperature regulation also seems unlikely because the plates have the same anatomy as the armor plates that covered the bodies of other dinosaurs. The most likely role for the plates is that they were used in display. Small, rounded bones called ossicles covered the throat region of Stegosaurus, and two pairs of long spikes that projected from the tip of the tail were almost certainly used in defense.
Wayangasaurus is one of the more primitive members of Stegosauria. It differed from the more ADV. Anst members of this group in having teeth at the front of the upper jaw. Its hips were also different from those of later stegosaurs, as was its snout. Other stegosaurs had long, slim, snouts, but the skull of Wayangasaurus was relatively short and broad. In some specimens, small horns were present above the eyes. However, these horns may also be absent in some Wayangasaurus skulls, so it is possible that they only appeared in adulthood, or were restricted to males or females. A large spike was present on each shoulder. Such spikes were typical for stegosaurs. The species that lacked them were unusual. In addition to the plates and spikes that ran along the backbone and tail of Wayangasaurus, several large armor plates were also arranged along both sides of the body of protection. Tojangasaurus is one of the most complete stegosaurs ever discovered. It is known from a good partial skeleton, as well as the fragmentary remains of several other individuals. It has often been illustrated with a long, shallow skull, similar to that of Stegosaurus, but unfortunately too few skull bones have been found to show exactly what the skull were particularly broad. Spines were present at the end of the tail and armor plates lined its neck and back, as seems to have been the case for all Stegosaurs except Stegosaurus. These plates were arranged in pairs. Those located over the hips were narrow and spine-like, whereas those from the neck and front part of the back were broader and flattened. Kentrosaurus is one of the best-known stegosaurs. It was discovered at Tendaguru in Tanzania, a famous fossil site where the remains of many other dinosaurs have been discovered. Hundreds of bones identified as Kentrosaurus were found at this site, but they were mostly isolated, and articulated remains were rare. Two composite skeletons have been assembled, but they are inaccurate in many details. It was smaller than Stegosaurus, it had long spikes along its tail and possibly on part of its back, and small plates were also present on the front half of its back and on its neck. In one specimen the pair OD spikes from the end of the tail were discovered connected to the vertebrae, so it is known that these spikes projected back beyond the taw. Ill tip and slightly sideways two long spikes with enlarged circular bases were originally thought to project sideways and backward from the sides of the broad hips however stegosaur remains from China later showed that spikes of this type actually projected from the shoulders. Gargoyleosaurus was the early stand one of the smallest members of the Ankylosauridae this was a mostly Cretaceous group that included the giant Ankylosaurus and other species with tail clubs small bumps covered the upper surface of the skull and four short triangular horns projected from behind each eye and the cheeks unlike other Ankylosaurids it had seven teeth in each of its premaxilla it also had simple straight nasal passages instead of looping ones like other Ankylosaurids. Dryosaurus was a medium-sized bipedal ornithopod with short arms and tiny hands its skull was short and tall with a sloping upper surface and a narrow beak which suggests that it has a selective feeder that browsed on leaves it is the best known member of a small group of ornithopods called the Dryosaurids once thought to be close relatives of Hypsilophodonwe now know that Dryosaurids were members of the Iguanodonta group that also includes Camptosaurus Iguanodon and the Hadrosaurs primitive Dryosaurid like Iguanodontians that had evolved a variety of body sizes and lifestyles prior to the evolution of the more familiar hadrosaurs have also been discovered. Camptosaurus was a member of the ornithopod dinosaur group Iguanodontia primitive Iguanodontians were small but Camptosaurus was one of the first to evolve into a larger animal-like more primitive ornithopods it was probably mostly bipedal however its short stout fingers were also well suited for supporting its weight which suggests that it may have walked on four legs while it foraged later Iguanodontians became increasingly quadruped almost Camptosaurus fossils have been found in late Jurassic rocks in North America. Othmelosaurus was a small bipedal ornithician with a short neck and forelimbs its hind limbs were much longer and had four elongated clawed toes a partial skeleton of Othmelosaurus was discovered in 1963. Equals 0.2 s, greater than unfortunately the skull, hands, and most of the tail were missing, isolated teeth, thought to belong to Othmelosaurus, have also been identified, they are small, leaf-shaped, and equipped with numerous small points, or cusps, which made them well suited for shredding leaves. 
Megazostrodon's name means large girdle tooth. Each check tooth possessed short, triangular points, or cusps, arranged in a line. They were simpler in shape to those of later mammals, especially in the way the cusps bit together, and were probably used for cutting up insects. The skeleton of Megazostrodon was unspecialized for any particular lifestyle, but it probably climbed, burrowed and ran, much like modern-day rats and shrews. It shares several features with a number of other later Triassic and early Jurassic mammals. These early mammals are grouped together as the Morgan U. Codontids. Sinoconodon is one of the largest primitive mammals found to date. Several features of its teeth and jaws were unusual. The long gap between the canine and cheek teeth, the robust jaw joint, and the stout, strong chin. These features that Sinoconodon had a powerful bite and might have preyed on large insects and small reptiles. It has also been suggested that it may have been closely related to Megazostrodon, but recent studies have shown that it was an even more primitive mammal, one of the earliest known.